Houston, Texas area. And I own a visual business. Uh, so it's helping small business owners with their online presence, specifically through website development and placement on Google, whether that's search engine optimization or paid ads on Google. So uh, if you're looking to monetize your website and actually make money on it, because you, by getting traffic on it, then let me know. And it's avisualbusiness.com. And she's great. <laughs> I really enjoy working with her. Awesome. Thanks, Sandy, for yeah. You know, what's fun is actually because of the COVID, we've expanded our connections. And um, Kristen, you're in Texas, right? Yeah. And Heather, you're, where are you? You're in Texas? Uh, oh, I'm in Milwaukee. I'm Milwaukee. like, I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm in Milwaukee. <laughs> And the rest of us here, I think, are um, Santa Barbara. But Brooke, would you like to introduce yourself? And I'm going to go grab a pen. I don't know where to put Hi, everyone. I'm Brooke Ebner. Um, I'm a realtor here in Santa Barbara. I work with a group called the Easter Team. We're a group of five smart, strong women. So we work well together, uh, love what we do. We specialize in any real estate. We say from mobile homes to mansions, work from Carpinteria to Goleta, um, even outside of that. So if anyone needs realtor in Santa Barbara, any real estate advice, we're always here to help. Uh, happy to be part. I was part of this group when it was a face-to-face -face thing I, a couple of years ago. <laughs> just like, we need to just see people. No matter how I see people, I would love to see people. So I'm happy to be here today. Thank you. It's great to have you. Kathy, welcome. All right. I'm having connection difficulties. I don't know what's happening, but hello. <laughs> I'm using my phone because. Uh, well, at least you got in. Emily. Anyways. Um, in. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, I, I tried to get in on my, I think there's something wrong. But anyway, my name is Kathy and um, I'm a sales director with Mary Kay Cosmetics for 34 years as of September 29th. And uh, I did invite a few people for this, but um, I don't know if they're joining, but um, anyways, yes, I think most people here know what Mary Kay is about, teaching skincare and color. And tonight at 7.30, I'm having a virtual shopping benefit for sex traffic teens with a few direct sellers at 7 30. yeah so, so later we'll do like to chat. have anyone jump on yeah i'll add a chat box later and um actually maybe i could put I it right now and go ahead yeah. and add that information so we can That's, catch I'm that trying to... margie hi hi <laughs> Good to see you all. Um, actually, your speaker Heather and I go way back. We, uh, <laughs> really? We work, yeah, we work for the same company, so I was so excited to be speaking today. Um, <laughs> but I, re I represent um, a line of shapewear that is a bra-free alternative, no wire, um, camis and demiats, uh, slips, anything you need, I have got it. Um, breathable, comfortable, supportive. Uh, so yeah, let me know. And I would love to talk to you further about that. So That's yeah. It. Thank you. Donna. Hi. Hello. Hello. Would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about what you do. Oh, I'm Donna Franks, and I am a Mary Kay consultant here in Santa Barbara. Nice. And, um, skincare is my name <laughs> <laughs> and my game. <laughs> That's great. Um, Jessica, welcome. Sorry about that. I'm here working on a few different things. My name is Jessica Hepburn and I'm calling. Um, I'm in Bishop, California. Nice. I was invited to this group from, um, by a friend, Michelle. She, um, she and I both work together now. We're business builders with um, doTERRA. So we sell doTERRA products and um, I'm really, really enjoying that. 
What's doTERRA? DoTERRA is essential oils. Oh, nice. Yeah, they're, it's natural. They're all natural and um, a great way. It's a great alternative medicine. Oh, yes. great. Okay. Yeah. Well, we yeah. look forward to um, everyone sharing their websites and contact oh, okay. information on the chat side. Oh, great. Okay. And if you Thank have you. any specials or something you want to share, you can just type that up in there. Okay, great. Um, in the, the first of November, actually November 2nd, they're coming out with their holiday line. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, so yeah, thank you. Well, everyone's shopping online now. I know. <laughs> Glad to be a part of the group. This is so great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And Michelle. Hi, I am Michelle Figueroa and I was invited by Kathy Calibro. I used to be a representative with Mary Kay and like Jessica said, I'm now with doTERRA essential oils. I just had a wonderful experience with the oils and wanting to pursue natural alternatives. So I've um, been building that business since May. So thank you pandemic. And it's been, <laughs> it's been nice to be able to work from home. And then um, I also work at UCSB. Um, I plan their dining for events, but that's not happening. So I have a um, business here to build and thought that with the information in the network you provide, it might be great to get some information on branding. Okay, I'm trying to just, um, there's someone else that's been trying to get in here. So I'm resending that. Thank you so much. I'm so glad all of you were able to successfully get in. <laughs> there was no trouble. Did anyone have trouble getting in? Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> well, um, so I today, have to test, Donna, oh. sorry, I'm Sandy. There's a one of my Mary Kay team members is on. Oh, good. Donna Frank, she just got on. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, Donna, um, she introduced herself, but you you just oh, for a I'm, while. I, I'm going in and out with this. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to find some. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, sorry Donna. <laughs> okay we need to tell them we're already into the christmas time <laughs> yes oh my gosh yeah, yeah it's already october um yeah i used to sell premier designs jewelry and so oh, you yes. know you have to really get into all the holidays and so exciting and it's so sad we can't get together in person and have our parties and um yeah <laughs> so i was real excited to you know we still have to go ahead and um and i met heather and i heard about what she does and i thought oh my gosh you should really um share that with the, with the group because it doesn't matter what business we are we're still in sales i mean i had someone else even saying like you know even um what they said even within your marriage you're, you're selling something you know <laughs> it's like <laughs> so so we just have to get comfortable with it and it's not to be salesy it's like helping people to know what you have to offer. And, um, you know, we're, we're cheating them if we don't communicate that and help them to connect with us um, and take advantage of, you know, the, the special things that only you can deliver in, in the way that you deliver. So, <laughs> so Heather, um, so glad to have you. <laughs> so um, would you like to kind of just introduce and you can you know start off on should i just so go right have, into it yeah, i can have right my introduction be part of it okay yeah. <laughs> well it's so nice to meet all of you it's nice to hear um who i have in the in the virtual room right now and to see some faces is always uh a pleasure right now i don't know i've really been craving that i don't know that we're in quite as lockdown as California, and I don't know about Texas, but um, up here in Milwaukee, we still are, um, it's nice to see faces. So <laughs> thank you all for, for gathering here. So, uh, you know, a little bit about me and, and I'll just kind of dive into and have my introduction be part of what I wanna share with you today. And I'm super excited to have this opportunity. So thank you, Sandy in advance. <laughs> um, so it was, it was in 2016, that uh, the company that I was repping for at that time announced that it was going to be closing. And it was a complete shock to me. I had been part of the leadership team there. I was in the top 20% of that company. And it really blindsided me to hear that that company that had been around for 19 years was going to be closing its doors. And I began this process of 
considering what I wanted to be when I grew up, <laughs> right? If, you, if you've had that in your life at this point, I just hit 50 and I've kind of hit that a couple of times where it's like, what do I wanna do? And I began this process of researching and meeting and networking and lots of prayer talking with my husband and really just trying to decide what I wanted to do next. Uh, my background was in graphic design, advertising, marketing. So I thought about going back to school. I thought about real estate. I thought about other direct selling companies. I just was all across the board. And one of the really key lessons that I learned from that season in my life was that I wanted to develop a brand that was about me that no matter what company I was repping for, I was not changing. Uh, today, I am still a wife of 25 years to my favorite guy in the world. I'm a mom of three girls. No, we don't have drama in our house, just wow. so you know. Um, I'm a dog mom. Um, I am a woman who loves travel and anything with beach and water. And I'm still the same that company that I was repping for doesn't define me. It's not who I am. And I wanted to create a brand that no matter where I went from that point moving forward, it would carry with me in all platforms. So now when I enter a room, oftentimes my brand precedes me. I don't even have to say anything. Women will say, will talk about my brand as they introduce me to another person at a networking meeting. And it was because of that brand that I have grown my business and my income over 50% in about two years. Mm -hmm. Now notice, I didn't say I increased my followers or my likes. I increased my income and my business. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about here today. So I wanna share with you four key ways that you can know why, when, and how to brand your business for success. So a big problem that I run into is I see women who try to aimlessly figure out how to position themselves in social media. Um, now, we certainly have an expert in the room that can show us how to do that. And that is awesome. I love having that as a resource and I'd like to connect with you later. Um, but many times I talk to women in business who are just aimlessly trying to figure out what to put out there and, and they use their company's social media tools that they have pre-done for them. And to really have a clear path and direction on your purpose in your business and who you are, it really means that you're meeting with people that are really energizing and getting you excited. So you are here in the right place. Um, if you have ever responded to somebody who asks you at a meeting for a good connection and you've said, anybody with skin, anybody who wants to be healthy, Anybody who's on the internet, right? You're in the right place. That's who I'm going to talk to today. You're in the right place if you've ever felt overwhelmed on what to post on social media and how you can actually get engagement and not be overwhelmed by everything out there. You're in the right place if you really don't know that you have a consistency to your look and you're just showing up in hopes of getting new customers. So what you're going to learn today is going to help you to increase the number of clients by actually decreasing your market, the people that you market to. You can have a strategy and a purpose driving all the ways that you market your business so that you can overcome the overwhelm. And I'm going to show you exactly how to create a brand and a look that is in absolute alignment with your purpose and in your life so that you are energized and excited when you get done and you're meeting your ideal audience. So the first thing I want you to know is that knowing your purpose, know your purpose. That's my first point. So just showing up online without a strategy or having thousands of followers doesn't mean that you make more money. It just means that you'll waste more time. I see lots of nodding. <laughs> it just means that you'll waste more time trying to find what works. And I don't know if you're like me, but I learned as a young 
woman in the kitchen to throw spaghetti up against the wall to see if the pasta was done cooking. Did anyone ever do that? And it's kind of the way it is with marketing like that. Just throw pasta against the wall and see what sticks. And that is no way to run a successful business. So the problem is, is that your marketing strategy should not be like cooking pasta. Um, that when your marketing looks haphazard and random and like it has no order to it, that's, that doesn't set you apart in your business. Your audience won't remember you, right? They don't know, they won't remember you when it's really important. So it'll also mean that you'll spend more time trying to make everybody else happy rather than making yourself happy. So the solution is to know your purpose. And how can you do that? Because oftentimes, I think we as women really struggle with that. There's so many things. And so here are some thoughts to consider when really trying to identify your purpose is what do you want to do? Or I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. What do you want others to say about you at your funeral? <laughs> it sounds a little like, okay, Heather, let's not get too deep here, right? <laughs> But think about that for a minute. I mean, just pause, right? We're all on the go a lot, but just pause with that thought for more than 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. When somebody stands up personally or professionally, what would you want them to say about you when all the fluff and all the material stuff is gone? Another thought to consider is, does your why make you cry? Does it cause a little bit of emotion in you that gets you a little choked up and you kind of have to dry your eye a minute and like you're almost even surprised by how that stirs emotions in you? Mm. If you could do only one thing every day for the rest of your life, what would that be doing? You didn't get paid for it, but you'd still want to do it. Some of these are a great place to start on considering your why. So, you know, I have had many people who, when I first started networking and was starting my company that would ask me, you know, well, why are you doing what you're doing? And I would likely say, I just love helping people, <laughs> right? Well, let's think about that. I mean, except for toddlers, <laughs> who doesn't want to help other people, <laughs> right? We all want to help other people. I mean, that's, as women, we have that nature about us too. And so you're not really setting yourself apart by saying that. And so thinking a little bit deeper about that, um, you know, one example of that is I often, many of us might be part of different Facebook groups and you'll see somebody comment about a referral. And I was online and I had seen a mom ask something like needs a chiropractor who specializes in kids who aren't sleeping through the night. Well, I immediately thought of a chiropractor I had heard at a network meeting, and that was her specific target audience, helping kids who can't sleep through the night in her chiropractor business. Now, did that mean that she didn't help anybody else? No. She either loves helping babies or loves helping moms who can actually get some, get some sleep, right? Well, maybe both. But... But the point is, is that I remembered who she was. I remembered her name so easily. I didn't stumble. And I freely gave that recommendation in that Facebook group. And you might think of opportunities like that too, when you think of referrals that you put in different groups out there. So a simple step, like I said, is start to write out the beginning of your eulogy. Again, not to get too morbid, but I mean, we're all going to, come to that place, right, in our lives, but start to write that out. What, what are some of the key words that stand out to you? Okay, moving on to the second point, narrow your audience. So many women in business that I talk to tell me that their ideal audience is everyone. Like I said in the beginning, everyone who has skin, everyone who wants to be healthy, everyone who, you know, whatever it is, has hair, and what they don't understand is that by not having that honed in narrow audience, they're really not appealing to anybody. So the problem is that you're trying to reach everyone and you end up reaching no one. You may have a lot of products or services to offer that can help a lot of different people, but until you can start to really hone in 
with one and identify with one particular group, your audience isn't going to remember you. So the problem also is no one really feels special. They don't feel like you can really relate or understand or that you're paying attention to their specific problems. Everybody wants to be heard. Plus, from a financial perspective, you'll just keep throwing more and more money, spending time trying to hit people, hopefully getting somebody in your audience. So no one really feels like you can resonate with them when you do this approach and as a business owner. And if, you, if they don't know who you are, then they're not going to want to invest in business with you and spend their hard-earned dollars towards your products or services. So what's the solution? Narrowing your audience. So if you could think about it, if you could have one client, pick, think of one of your favorite clients right now. If you could have 20 clients just like that, how would that make you feel? What would spending time with that person feel like for you? You know, when we're being called away from our family for different things, it's worth it to be spending time with people that really make a difference and energize us and we energize them, right? So think of who might energize you. Think of that feeling that you get to, that you feel when you get to share your product or service with her. So when your client feels like you know them, they come back to you over and over and they refer you easily and freely to their friends and their family. They just do. You may not, sorry, but you may not even have to pay for some Google ads for some of that because they're going to automatically rec recommend you, right? So, you know, I know too, I think back and I think um, when my kids were little, I would say, you know, be nice to everybody on the playground. And your mom may have said that to you too, and, you know, when you were younger, be nice to everybody, play nice. Um, don't disclude anybody, make everybody feel welcome. And we want to do that, right? As moms, as women, um, in whatever circles we're in. But in real life, we have our inner circle. We have our inner circle and we have our outer circle right? We have those people that really fill us up that we confide in and they confide in us. And that's really what we want to think about is that um, those people that we have in our inner circles are who in reality, we do kind of pick favorites. <laughs> I hate to say it. So, so a simple action that you can take is write out that detailed description of one of your favorite customers who you just love working with. And you'll start to get a really good idea of who your ideal audience is. Point number three I want to share is to note your style. So when we talk about branding, this is really important. Um, again, you know, sometimes we have so many choices in picking what our branding could look like and all these apps that make things really fun and like, oh, something shiny. Oh, this is a pretty font. But actually, did you know that your fonts and your color choices that you might put can actually either deter or attract your ideal audience? There's so much psychology that goes into this. You can actually choose the fonts and colors that would poorly psycho have a poor psychological effect on your prospective viewers. And they'll just keep scrolling and going right past you. So when you don't have a consistent look mm -hmm. for you personally, and you don't stand out from the company that you represent, people can easily forget you. I just had that instance a little bit earlier today. I was like, oh, I know I bought this product from this multi-vendor event and I can't think of her name because all I could see was the logo of the company. I didn't know her name <laughs> and I went everywhere trying to find it. Fortunately, I did. I finally found her, um, but not because of branding or having her stand out. So. The other thing is, is that trying to copy somebody else's style is never going to work. It's never going to feel authentic and um, it won't appeal to your prospect. So a, a great solution would be to go back to your purpose, right? That's where I start with everything when I'm talking to women about branding their business. Go back to your purpose and your ideal audience and learn what style is true to be for both people because that's like the perfect blend when you and your ideal audience are attracted and drawn to the same things. So here's a couple kind of um, categories, I guess, if you will, to pick from. If you want to kind of jot them down as I go, pick one of the two. It's kind of like a this or that. So you go classic, 
or modern? How about casual or sophisticated? Bold or subtle? Simple or elegant? Now consider fonts that might represent each of these styles and there is psychology in fonts. So for just a couple minutes, I'm gonna give you a quick little tutorial. Again, taking you back to my college design class, my typography 101. <laughs> So come on back with me. And um, I wanna just show, teach you a couple of things that can be really useful practical tools when you're selecting things and you're promoting yourself in your business on social media. So serif fonts are the fonts that normally are found in newspapers and in publications, they're in print. Um, they have this uh, transmission of authority and tradition. The serif fonts typically have that little thin stroke at the end of the, of the letter and their fonts like New Roman, Times, Verona, things like that, right? So the values for the uh, serif fonts are very uh, reliable. They have integrity and also professionalism. Now sans serif fonts on the other side don't have those crisp or are crisp um, and clean typography. They don't have those little thin lines and they have more of a clean and modern look to them. Those are fonts like Helvetica, Verdana, Futura, fonts like that. Gil Sands is one I use a lot, Century Gothic, things like that. And those work well with a more contemporary brand or more of a minimalistic feel, okay? Now, script fonts has, have made a huge introduction and can also be kind of overused. Script fonts kind of mimic handwriting. Um, they're really pretty and flowy, feel a little bit more formal, definitely towards your feminine audience. But again, minimal, minimally using serif or um, sorry, script fonts is really what you want to keep in mind with that. And don't use a lot of it. Use it for like a heading and maybe your body copy is a sans serif or a serif font to kind of counterbalance that. So now are you ready to kind of choose your fonts a little bit? You're all ready. You've got simplicity is your key, okay? I always learned in design school, less is more. Um, so don't try to overdo it and make it all pretty. Um, making something too bold doesn't necessarily achieve the goal that you might have in mind. Um, and the script fonts, like I said, may look really pretty, but must be used sparingly. And if it's not in alignment with who you're trying to target, consider those things. Um, and I can give you something at the end I'll share with you, it, um, kind of a little bit of a, um, a guide on these things. So you can put your emails at some point in the chat box and I can get those to you so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. I'm obviously very visual as a graphic designer, so I think seeing that really helps. Um, legibility is really key with that. Um, being over 50, um, anybody, in that age group with glasses will thank you later if you let us be able to read your type. So um, I know some um, influencers that I follow are really young and must have really good eyesight because I cannot read that little type. So I'm out. <laughs> um, so a top tip is really choose fonts that are crisp and bold, but don't overdo it with the boldness, okay? So just like your font choice, your color choices also have a same effect in terms of the psychology and evoking different emotions. And <clears throat> color plays a really important role on your brand and how it's perceived and if it's remembered. So whether you're a fashion brand trying to connect with a youthful audience or you're trying to sell medical supplies or some high intelligent product and creating customer trust is really important. Color really influences this. Mm -hmm. And choosing the color can really enhance your brand perception and poor color choices will damage it. And people may not even realize that it's happening. It's all in our minds and how, it's, how we're wired. So for instance, if you choose the wrong color content in your logo, it could be less readable and turn people away and you risk being ignored altogether. So just highlighting really quickly some of the color meanings so that you don't have to go back to college for color psychology. <laughs> um, red in marketing is going to really capture attention. The meaning of red is often associated with excitement, passion, danger, energy, and even action. 
orange is very similar, can represent some of the same things, but it's a little bit more towards creativity, adventure, enthusiasm, success, and balance. It adds a little bit more of a fun to any picture, a little bit of orange. Yellow in color psychology can really, um, it revolves around the sunshine. It makes you feel happy and positive and optimistic. It makes you feel like summer. Those of us in Wisconsin really need that right about now. <laughs> on our gray gloomy days. Um, pink is obviously gonna be really targeted towards your feminine audience and draw them into your brand. Um, it has this feeling of femininity, playfulness, immaturity, and unconditional love. Green in color psychology is highly connected with nature and money. Um, growth, fertility, health, and generosity also have some of the positive meanings in the color green. Blue ties in with the sea and the sky. Um, it's stability and harmony, peace, calm, and trust, and gives that feeling to your customer about a sense of um, calmness and peace that is also very reliable. Purple in color psychology is more royal. And um, I'm always careful around this one because purple, yeah, I see that. Purple is one of, is my brand main leading color and you can't really see my shirt, but I have, I usually always am wearing purple. I have purple glasses, so funny. <laughs> I love that. Um, so we have to be a little careful because sometimes we can be perceived as being conceited or a little um, superior. We don't want that. Uh, right? <laughs> I love being able to see you guys. This is awesome. Um, but it does have that feeling of um, power, nobility, luxury, and wisdom. White in color psychology really gives that cleanness, innocence, goodness, um, cleanliness and humility. So keep in mind that I'm talking about North American culture when I'm talking about colors and how they're viewed. Um, black is going to, specifically it's being used a lot right now in retail market and it's really going to symbolize a little mystery, power, elegance, and sophistication. Uh, brown is going to be your earthy color. It's going to feel natural and anything kind of outdoorsy, woodsy, that sort of thing, and um, give that comfort, security, and kind of more of a down-to-earth nature. So hope you enjoyed my little class on that. So I'm going to kind of get back to some other helpful things, but I just thought some of that information would be really helpful. So um, just thinking of color and fonts, I'm going to just throw out there Let's take the McDonald's brand, right? I don't even have to show you a picture of it. You know it in your head. Now it's red and yellow for a reason. Those two color combinations together, not only create happiness and action, remember power and action and happiness, also creates hunger. I mean, that's amazing to me. It's really incredible. And I don't even have to show you what the type looks like because you can see that M in your mind, right? That is obviously a very exaggerated definition of brand, of branding, but using the, I just want to help you see the colors and the fonts like that really do matter and make a difference. You would never go to a brown <laughs> colored logo restaurant. It would not feel appetizing, right? I've seen that no way. <laughs> And our kitchens tend to be painted in yellow. My kitchen is um, and having little red accents. So um, we, we don't even realize we're doing those things. So a simple action would be to choose a color combination that evokes the emotion that you want for your brand. Okay, point number four, um, when to, to know when to outsource, okay? Mm -hmm. um, when you feel like you've done a lot of these things, you're like, Heather, I've... I, I've tried this. I've tried my purpose. I take a, a shot at it on social media and Canva and all these other places. Um, and you just still feel like you're just spinning your wheels and you don't know where to start. Know when to outsource something, right? That's the best advice for any business owner. Um, continuing to DIY yourself can help you feel unsure of your purpose, your strategy, and your brand. And it only prolongs you connecting with your ideal client and making more money. It's time to stop asking your friends in a Facebook group which logo they like, this one or that one. 
That drives me crazy. I got to tell you, because if I don't know your purpose or about your business, how can I select a logo that might be best for you? And I know there's lots of different apps out there, you know, design your own logo and things like that too. And that if you know your purpose and your ideal audience and all of that, and you have some tools to work with, those can certainly work. But knowing when to outsource is just when you're just continuing to spin and you just can't make any headway with it. So it's really common to think that as a small business owner, we, in the startup phase, we should DIY everything. And you know what? There is a time for that. I did that too. But I have to tell you again, like I said at the beginning, once I outsourced my branding and had somebody else take a fresh look at it, it totally changed the trajectory of my business. So one of the solutions would be to get a fresh perspective and a viewpoint from a strategist who has the experience doing that, um, helping other business owners um, with their brand strategies and distinguishes them from their competition. So when you hire the right person, organically, those designs that you look for just feel like they fit. It just feels right in your gut. And launching a new brand with a strategy and a clear plan that's laid out for you will feel like a load has been taken off of your shoulders. I'm telling you, you will feel so proud and excited to share your brand. And it will not at all be like throwing spaghetti against the wall to feel, to see if it's done cooking or it's going to work, right? So being a graphic designer, I knew I was too close to my own brand. I was too close to um, what, I, what I was thinking in my head and my ideas. And so to have somebody else have an objective design and look on what my purpose was and ask me those important questions was so key. Uh, I also thought I really didn't need a brand. And you know what? I'm just going to tell you, being in the direct selling industry for this many years, I've had, I had so many people when I rolled out my brand or was even starting to talk about it that were like, Heather, like, why are you wasting your money? Your company already gives you all these marketing things. Like, just use those. But to all the points that I've said before, it just wasn't helping me stand out. And now having my own brand is how people identify with me. And it feels so authentic and true to me that it doesn't even feel like I'm working, right? Mm -hmm. It's just part of who I am. So the clients that I have worked with have felt the same way. Um, they've faced criticism. They've um, had the, you know, other people, other peers look at them and family members. And until they leaned into leading the way in their industry, they did not see the results. And as the direct selling industry, and really, you know, this goes because I also do branding for other companies, not just direct selling, but that's really where my niche is. That's where my narrow audience is. And that's where I have the experience in. And as this direct selling industry is projected to increase five times in the next five years, we are going to see so many more doTERRA reps and Mary Kay reps and Ruby Ribbon reps and Pampered Chef. We are going to see so many more that being on that cutting edge to brand yourself in your industry is really what's going to set you apart when that C starts to get really, really deep. So a simple action is certainly we can set up a discovery call. I do have also a DIY branding course coming up that um, it is getting ready to launch here soon. You can, again, share your contact information and I can send that to you. Um, I also have, and usually when I'm in person, I have these great little um, marketing tips that, um, that I can send you that you can print off and have. And um, the other side is a little bit of promo for the company that with Mar uh, Margie too, that we both are reps for with Ruby Ribbon. So it's kind of like a twofer. Um, but I'd love to share some of these tips and these information informational tools with you and help you really be set apart. And knowing when and how to brand your business for success is what I love showing women and have successfully been doing. So I'd love to connect with you and give you some of these free gifts. Um, and I'd love if you have any questions. I don't know if we're open for Q&A and how we are on time here, Sandy, but oops, you're still on mute, Sandy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I love the conversations on the side here. It's awesome. I, yeah, I haven't looked at them all, so I have to look at it. <laughs> yeah, 
I do want to welcome Gabriella for joining us. Um, and, you know, sorry, there's a little mix up with the, the link, um, I think. But Gabriella, maybe you can just quickly introduce yourself. And um, are you there? Can you unmute? There you are. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Good morning. I'll be quick because she's in the middle of her presentation. Um, I'm sorry, I tried to start at 12, but I had problems. I think last time I was in the meeting was back in April, um, but uh, I am a lawyer. Uh, I am a TIC law office that deals with divorces, custody, visitation, mediations. Uh, we also do um, res restraining orders, domestic violence, and DUIs for criminal cases. Uh, there is also a, an immigration attorney with us at the office. Anyway, but it's all related to taking care of families um, and when they're going through um, separation or starting a new family. Wow. And that's it. Well, in the chat, <laughs> chat area, you can introduce yourself and give your um, contact information. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much. You. And Heather, yes. continue. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, well, like I said, I wasn't really in the middle. You came in at a good spot, yeah. so you didn't. Yeah. That's okay. No, um, and A's. <laughs> right. And you can go back and listen to the recording because with some of those tips. But, um, you know, just again, to recap, I just wanted to uh, recap what we talked about. So we talked about uh, knowing your purpose. We talked about narrowing your audience. We talked about knowing your style mm. and know when to outsource. So those are just some helpful tips that hopefully will be a good guide for you to know when it's time for you to brand your business whether it's in direct selling or any other company. As I said, I've been in this industry for a long time. And I also do strategy coaching and planning sessions with women in direct selling. So I have found through the years that being in entrepreneurial groups and being in direct selling, they don't all have the same uh, tools, I guess I would say. And so I can introduce that and bring those into conversations as I'm helping women in the network marketing industry. So um, if any of you have any questions or anything, I'd love to hear voices. I love the sign, you know, the, the motions. That's really nice. So yeah. I was just going to say, kind of piggyback on what um, Heather was saying too, is a lot of the things you're talking about, the colors and the branding, it's really kind of blends into websites as well. Um, and also about uh, targeting uh, your market down is much better, um, even for ads. You know, you don't want to uh, spend money on targeting the whole United States if you make more money in bigger cities or, you know, niche areas. It's um, same idea. And then back to your branding, especially with MLMs, because we, ha we have, you know, I've, I've got a part of a, a couple of MLMs as well, but it's, you know, you have the same templated website that everybody else has. So you have to set yourself apart. And if that happens to be on social media or creating your own, you know, your personality, your own style that sets you apart to make yourself memorable, like you were talking about that chiropractor, you know, if you, if you don't stand out, people aren't going to remember you. And so when somebody says, Hey, do you know somebody where I can buy oils? And you're like, oh, I can't remember somebody. I know I know somebody and then you got to start digging through. So anyway, it's great, great stuff. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, good. Well, thank you. Thank you for that feedback. I appreciate that. Hi, my name is Kathy. I Hi, finally Kathy. found a spot in my place. I finally found a spot that was- Oh, good. <laughs> Sorry, I'm wearing this neck thing because I had a neck problem. But anyway, um, I have a question on, since I was kind of sketchy at the beginning, I didn't hear, did you say or share your- who are you representing as far as your direct selling company? You have your own, did you have your yeah. own? Brand? I mean, I, I have two businesses. So um, I am a representative for Ruby Ribbon is the company that I rep for. It wasn't part of my presentation. So you didn't miss anything necessarily. Okay. <laughs> um, so I've, and I've been in the direct selling industry since 2012. And then my other business is Become Difference Makers. And really that came to be before COVID. Um, because you know what happened is when I launched my own branding about well, now about two years ago, um, I had women like reaching out to me and messaging me and saying, hey, could, 
could we go to coffee back when we could go to coffee and could I, <laughs> could I just could I just pick your brain and I heard that so many times and I was like wait a minute like there's something here women need help with this yes. and yeah. I can offer assistance I can I can use my background with marketing, advertising, and graphic design to do that. So um, that's what I've been, that's my other business. And I've really been growing. So then when COVID hit, it was, you know, it's like exploded because <laughs> people had the time to pay attention to it. I think a little bit more. So do you do workshop? I'm, I've been in Mary Kay for 34 years. So. <laughs> and actually COVID has helped uh, Mary Kay propel forward and yeah. have breaking months but like you were saying um yeah with so many of us in direct selling it's yeah. propelled our businesses forward so do you do like a would you ever do like a zoom coaching just for the specific direct selling like a company like i would and i do only i do that for, only Mary Kay or something like that yes i do that i i go in and i can talk at um leadership conferences leadership meetings um conferences, any sort of, you know, group. So I'm definitely open to that. So I'm going to put my information to in the chat. And if you want to reach out or connect with me too, Kathy, um, I, I'd love to talk with you a little bit about that. So I can do that for other companies because I don't promote my business. I'm really coming in from a place of wanting to help other women in direct selling up their game in business and really be taken seriously. Like I kind of got a little fed up of having so many people saying that I wasn't an entrepreneur at different groups. I'm like, Hey, wait a minute. We are too. So, <laughs> um, so in any case, I'm just wanting to really help groups of women, um, with that part of their business. So. And then what about women that are in, um, not necessarily direct selling companies, mm -hmm. They created their yes. own product I, and then they want to sell that. Um, I have a couple I tried to invite here, but they couldn't get away at me. Yeah, I, uh, I, I definitely do that too, because my principles are going to be the same no matter what, right? So I've worked with and done branding for other companies and, you know, solopreneurs aside from just direct selling definitely this would apply okay. like is this neck pillow i'm wearing is created by someone i just met and great. neck issues and i put it on and i go oh my gosh i made a big difference but that's great way so she's uh, trying to brand herself and i'm trying yeah. to yeah that and she's it's just starting kind of and it's thing. purple too <laughs> well, it's kind of a burgundy thing but i'm telling you it made a difference relieving when you're sitting here zooming or whatever it's relieved all the my neck problems, but anyway, that's, that's great. But yeah, so I'd yeah. like to refer her to you because she um, is just starting to brand herself. So. Perfect. Good. Well, um, this has been fun. <laughs> <laughs> so nice to see real warm bodies, and even though we can't feel the warm bodies. <laughs> But um, I just want to um, let you guys also in the chat box, if there's certain pain points that you're feeling and you want to um, have us invite, you know, other guest speakers on a certain topic, then go ahead and type that in. You can also message me anytime. Uh, we're, what's great about our network is we're grassroots so that we can pivot very quickly um, and yes. be very responsive. Uh, we started off local, but we've just recently partnered with a um, larger B2B uh, community. So now we are a network within a larger network. We're called the Santa Barbara Hub with the Be Connected. And mm -hmm. I'll um, type in the, um, a way that you can explore that. And just uh, another endorsement of saying how authentic and um, how personal it is. I, that's the way I met Heather and Kristen was through our Be Connected connections. <laughs> and we never met each other. And that's the way that, you know, they're in two different states. We're in three different states. <laughs> yes. Um, one thing we have to remember is when we make 
appointments with each other is, well, which time zone are you in? <laughs> I've never got to ask that before. <laughs> so, so anyway, I will um, put the website in there now. And then also um, they just, Be Connected just added a, a way for you to help nonprofits and for nonprofits to be able to make residual income at no cost for them. So if you're do you have any nonprofit or organizations that you want to support? Um, can you know? Let me know, and then we can talk to them and see if it's a good fit for them. So I will put that down. Um, anyone else have any other comments or questions? No, Gabriella, do you have anything more to share? You <laughs> have you had more um, legal? things come up with COVID? <laughs> oh, boy. I'll, I'll, share, I'll share that um, my little world a little bit. Um, yeah, since from, um, from March 17th um, until July, the courts were closed. So nothing was happening in terms of any of the trials, court hearings, absolutely nothing. It was all closed here in Ventura, in Santa Maria. Um, and then in July, we started having, um, well, there was emergency hearings. They had like big emergency cases that you could still go to court. But now all the court hearings, including trials, mandatory settlement conferences, everything is online on Zoom. So I've done trials on Zoom and it's pretty interesting. On a daily basis, I have court almost every day, just on the, I, dress up halfway and go and present your case. And um, I find it very productive, to be honest with you. I think that it's a new way to, to, um, to, to be able to, especially for smaller um, court hearings that are just a motion type of hearing uh, or continuances or administrative type of hearings. I think the, the having it online is very um, effective. I, I can be waiting for other colleagues to do their cases and be doing some other work on my other computer. Um, and so that uh, has been great. Maybe for jury trial, that's a problem, but um, not so bad for regular family law trials. Um, it's been a good experience. I think we should actually use some of this opportunity to learn that we can do business without seeing people in person for every single activity. Uh -huh. um, I have my office functioning, uh, um, I have five employees. We're functioning very well um, for all these months and all remotely. Um, we have just a few computers and we kind of can see what everybody's doing and have meetings. All my meetings with clients have been on Zoom or phone. I refuse to meet with clients in person unless it's a real, real emergency. And I only did three times, um, but I'm, they're not missing anything. <laughs> the reality is that they're not missing anything. Now, of course, I, I still <clears throat> have full payment for my rent, for the office rent, for parking lot, for my office, but I don't mind. I rather pay, pay for that and have it there, maybe eventually use it than to um, and, and be able to actually work remotely. Now for the first time, I actually am enjoying my house. <laughs> it's like, wow, this is what my dogs and cats do all day. I love it. Yeah, because like I have a house, but I just work to pay mortgage and then I come home and just use it for the evenings and then I go to sleep. It's like, but I I love working from home and I have all my animals laying down around me and I'm actually very productive because I don't have interruptions from people all the time showing up. Uh, not, not a lot of my colleagues are productive. I hear a lot of my lawyer colleagues saying that they don't get anything done, that they're not, that they're losing money. Um, so that's different people, but I am a type A kind of person. So I don't need to be, um, in an office to get my job done and so it's been actually more productive for me and I love nice. it <laughs> I'm actually dreading the time that I have to start going back and be all day at the office or at court or whatever 
<laughs> but so yeah, that's my story. Oh, it's been good. Well, it's been a pleasure. What I'll do is um, I'll email everyone that's here and um, attach the recording, um, or I'll provide a link for the. Recording. Let me ask a question. Uh -huh. Did any of you actually have uh, losses or something related to COVID? Because the last time I had a meeting, I was under quarantine for COVID. And so I... Um, That's right. Yeah. yeah. I remember. Yeah. So it looked very sick at the time. Oh, my gosh. I didn't recognize you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I didn't have nothing. I was like... Ugh. <laughs> yeah, I survived. Oh, so glad. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Any yes. of yeah if you got sick or anything yes it was all, it was horrible it was the worst experience i've ever had i uh it was the one time i was clo thinking i could die i couldn't breathe it was horrible for very horrible but i didn't go to the hospital uh i ref i talked to the paramedics but ended up making choice not to go to the hospital now to be honest it was a bad choice now i know because my brain is not my brain's normal now. I know it was a bad choice. But at the time, I was so afraid of going to the hospital because last time I was in the hospital I was with my mom and then she died. And um, wow. I, I had a little trauma on that. And also COVID was at the beginning because it was in March. So there was no testing. There was, uh, it was, it was really scary for me to go to the hospital. So I, I didn't, but I should have used the, the help instead of potentially dying alone <laughs> <laughs> but any one of you um had any situation or no but situation so we have a new grandchild in Kauai that we haven't been able to meet yet he was born august 23rd and excited to say we just got tickets and we got the covid testing in time we're leaving tomorrow oh nice Ooh, good for you <laughs> Yeah, so I'll be gone for a week. Oh, and then I'll be putting together a newsletter when I get back. So if you have anything that you want to include in the newsletter, email it to me, make it, um, you know, more, no more than 300, you know, words or, or so just make it real brief. And um, you can include a link where you want them to go. If you're with our network, it'll link to your listing, um, your business listing. So Nice, nice. Guys, I wanted to say this. COVID is real. I and, and I am speaking for as a as a person that suffered. So when it, when we don't know somebody that got sick or somebody that died, it feels like it's just a little bit out there and because we can't see it. But be safe on your trip. Okay, thank you. Yes. Maybe even wear gloves. Be safe. I am the healthiest person. I juice every day. I, I bad connection. Work out every day. I only eat healthy. I got sick. It was really strange for me. Okay. Like how in my 40s and happened to me. And it was the worst, worst, worst thing I've ever had. So be safe. And I do have a close friend that died. Mm -hmm. um from covid uh here in santa barbara so it is real don't forget i know we're tired of being at home and we're tired of having to walk around with masks maybe but um it's it's real and i hope you all be safe and um protected okay thank you thank you everyone for coming thank you heather for thank you for having us <laughs> yeah. thank you thanks for coming it was nice to meet everybody thank you heather. Nice meeting you guys Take care. Have a wonderful trip, Sandy. Oh, thank Just you so fun, much. Sandy. That'll be awesome. Congratulations.